just unit law express. In the employer-employee relationship, the employee has some entitlements that are guaranteed by the law. Today on Law Express, we discuss one of such, which is the annual leave. Thanks for joining us. We'll go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, you meet my co-panelists to discuss annual leave. Don't go away. My name is Noella Seydu, and this is Law Express. My mother passed on to me an age-old moisturizing secret handed down from generation to generation. Shea butter has been and still remains the ultimate and trusted natural product for the skin. It is safe for all, including newborns. I use Violon Shea butter products for my hair and skin and for all my children right from birth. Violon Shea butter is an amazing diaper cream. I love my family. That is why I trust only Violon Shea butter products for our skin care needs. Violon Shea butter, feed your skin right. Ifa Vanderpool. Ifa is a private legal practitioner and she also enjoys reading novels. Samo is a private legal practitioner. He likes to go on law walks to watch movies and he's also a writer. His latest work is featured in the Writers Project of Ghana's latest collection and it is titled and it's titled Resilience. Norella Seidu. Norella is a private legal practitioner a consistent member of our three lawyer panel on the show. She plays a dual role as the host of the show and likes to play tennis in the video. The question of annual leave is actually a very important you know, issue because it's right at the heart of employee wellness. And you know, we are just coming from the COVID period and we've had issues in the employment world around lots of resignations during the, um, during the COVID period and, you know, some employees were interviewed in some publications and they raised quite a number of questions with the key one being, you know, the question of rest, the question of health, the question of their well-being. So annual leave is an integral part of the discussion. And Obviously, we we'll, would we'll discuss a bit more into uh, regarding what the provisions are. But the key point regarding the essence of the leave is that the worker is more than simply a worker. In other words, is the worker is more than a factory hand. The worker is a mother. The worker is a father. The worker is, you know, a church member. The worker is a social activist. The worker plays some other roles within the community. And the worker also has civic responsibilities and obligations as well. So the architecture of the provisions on leave strikes a balance and aims to help the employee fulfill some of these obligations while still living up to his or her core mandate of ensuring productivity within the workspace. And to add to that, um, leave is also to enable the worker to rest because the worker is going to be working for 12 uh, months in the year. And it's very important for, to ensure productivity, to allow time for the employee to rejuvenate, to be rejuvenated, to have time to come back to work. And so that is one of the intents of the provisions on leave, that the worker has time to rest and take a break from the work um, environment from the work itself, from any physical um, activities or toll on their body to be able to um, come back. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good point because ultimately it's also the more rested the employee is, the more healthy the employee is, the more productive the employee is as well. So it's, uh, it's a give and take. And ultimately, whilst, the, whilst during the period of leave, the employer loses the service of the employee, 
ultimately the employer gains by having a rejuvenated, a well-rested and a healthy employee. Um, aside this benefit to both the employer and the employee, there's also the element of where the absence of the employee provides the employer the opportunity to perhaps audit and check the work that the worker was doing. It's been found that most corrupt practices have been unearthed during the period of the worker's leave. So where the person has been absent, there's been the opportunity with this fresh person sitting in your seat to see where perhaps you were going wrong. And it's not always about just corruption. Where the person probably, you, you also get to value the person's service in his or her absence. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's important. Now, in the workspace environment now, there's, I mean, succession planning has always been around, but it's also now kind of like taking a huge dimension with employers trying to figure out, you know, how do I create a sustainable business module? And in creating a sustainable business module, obviously, the employee is at the heart of it. So. What the leave permits the employer to do is to probably test if the key person is not around. Mm -hmm. Is there any other person who can perform his or her role? Yeah. It's not the most obvious thing you see when you are dealing with leave. But the other thing is that it helps you unearth other talent within the workspace because once a person goes on leave, there's a vacuum and you there's know, an opportunity there's an for, opportunity for fresh, people fresh to hands. step up. So that organizationally, the organization knows that, you know what, in the absence of person A, I can trust person B with the same task. Yes, rest is an integral part of it, yeah. but I think what the leave does is to do a lot more than simply rest. I think yeah. it gives the employer the opportunity to actually stress test a succession planning mechanisms because if an employee goes on leave and every two, three, four minutes you have to call the employee mm -hmm. to find out this, to find out that, then it means that there's a serious problem organizationally yeah. in terms of its structuring and in terms of how, you know, its records and its succession planning measures are because it should not be so. The employee should be able to check out and have a good vacation mm -hmm. and still processes should be in place, clients won't suffer. Company should be able to still function. Exactly. Leave also helps in dealing with this, you know, indispensable mindset that empl some employees have. Yeah. Because the reason why they don't take their leave is because they say to themselves, if I don't do it, nobody else would. But you never really know that until you are not there. Because if you are not there, it's the employee's duty to actually you know, try and find ways and means of putting a substitute in place. When you mentioned calling the employee every few minutes, then I, I, it, it occurred to me that, of course, that is also a right guaranteed under the leave, that the employee is entitled to unbroken period of leave. So whilst yeah. the employee yeah. is, on leave, is on leave, they should not be interrupted. They should at least have the time for themselves to be able to rest and do whatever activities they have planned for themselves without any interruptions. Of course, the employer may call the employee back um, if it is absolutely necessary for the employee to, to come back to work because of work requirements. But as much as possible, as he said, you are testing your systems, you are testing your organizational structure. You should be able to use that time to check how well the company can function without the employee. And so as much as possible, the employee is not to be interrupted or the employee's leave is not to be interrupted. However, if the employer decides due to, let's say, the exigencies of the work for the employee to come back, then the employer is under an obligation to um, pay or provide the employee whatever costs he would have expended to interrupt the leave. So for instance, you have an employee who may have traveled to the village and is spending the vacation there. They may have booked a hotel or traveled even overseas. Um, and you call them back. Then you know that that bedding is on you to pay whatever cost the employee, employee would incur to interrupt the leave. 
So you definitely don't want to be interrupting that employee's leave until it's absolutely necessary. Um, um, I think we should um, take the conversation back a bit to talk about the number of days the leave is actually supposed to run for for every worker. Yeah. And the law is that in every calendar year, an employee is entitled to a minimum of 15 working days as leave. Yes. So once we um, bring that back, then we talk about um, how this leave should be run, okay. which should essentially be a paid for leave. So the employee should not forfeit salary because he's gone to rest or she's gone to rest, okay. but this is a fully paid for leave. Mm. It being a minimum also does not suggest that you cannot enhance the number of days. It's just a guide so that at least that the 15 days are guaranteed. But if you want to make it 30 days, if you want to make it 28 days, you can um, negotiate that you know, on a case-to-case -case basis. Forget about the 15 days for a moment. Yeah. What the Labour Act says is that the employer can say to his or her employee, you know what, the law says 15 days, but... I'm happy to give you 30 days or 25 days. Yeah. What some organization would do is to probably graduate it. So you probably start off with the 15, you get to a certain rank, they place you on 20, mm -hmm. you get to a certain rank, they place you on 30 and all. In terms of how the structuring is, the very basic minimum is 15 days. Yeah. And that's standard. Now, in order for an employee to enjoy you know, the annual leave, there's a requirement that the employee should have worked continuously for a period. Now, that continuous requirement simply means that either the employee has been working, just as the wording suggests, continuously over the year, or if the employee's work is irregular, then that employee should have been in the employ of the master for at the very least for 200 days, you know. So once you meet those criteria, then you are entitled to annual leave. The minimum. That's the minimum, yeah. yes. Now, for the annual leave, you are entitled to full pay. And full pay within this context is actually your pay less over time because in any event you are on leave and you are not working overtime, so there is no contractual or factual basis for paying an employee over leave during, over time during this yeah. period. Now, what the language that the Labour Act used is that you pay the employee his or her normal remuneration. Now, within the structure of the Labour Act, remuneration simply means your salary and your salary or wages and other emolument. And these emoluments are simply perks, benefits, and mm -hmm. advantages other than your basic or your minimum salaries. I think we could consider the voluntary interruption uh, of work, yeah. where perhaps a period, it's a period during which a worker is absent from normal duties with the permission of the employer on account of the worker's uh, participation in voluntary communal labor or work. Um, for the discharge of civic duties, which includes voting, registering to vote. Um, jury duty. Yes, jury duty, yes. Um, special leave with or without pay. And um, all of these shall not be counted as part of the workers' annual leave. Um, also, yeah, most importantly, uh, I think sick leave and pregnancy leave. I think we have to emphasize that the leave is for a calendar year. So the minimum requirements of the 15 days requires that the leave is taken within a calendar year, which is the January to December year. And so an employee is supposed to take the leave within that period. It's an important fact you raise because, um, I mean, you are in this space and <laughs> you, would, you would know that continually there's this practice where people rack up leaves to the point they've got, to the point where they have like Two, 200 days, 300 <laughs> days of leave. Now, this, th this practice is clearly not consistent with the Hello. legislative intent when it comes to the provisions on leave because the provisions on leave tries to strike a balance between productivity and, rest. and also rest. So any situation that swings 
you know, that swings the situation to an extreme clearly cannot be within the provision of the law. So, for instance, what happens in the case of an employee who says he's going on a 300-day leave? <laughs> it's like a, almost yeah. a full year. Almost a full year. <laughs> So of what benefit is that to the employer? And of what benefit is that to the employee as well? Because within that particular year, there may be development, because the employee is for, the employer is required, for instance, mm -hmm. to undertake training and development. Yeah. Now you are on leave for 300 days. When training and development activities are, being taken, are taking place, where would you be? And would you be in a position to benefit from some of these trainings and all. I think this spills into the phenomena of accumulated leave, exactly. where they refuse to go for leave for many years and then wake up and then travel abroad, get a new job, and then seek to use that leave. Um, accumulated leave, like they term it, is illegal. It's foreign to our law. Though some people do that, it is wrong. And it uh, offends our labor laws. What the law actually says is that if you agree, any, anything that uh, you do to an agreement that you have with the employer to forfeit leave is void. So yeah. from the onset, that leave is, is improper. You can't, you can't accumulate leave. And when it says an agreement with the employer, let's just know that it's not that the employer employees sit down and say, uh, oh, this year I won't take my leave. Sometimes <laughs> the employee has applied for the leave. The employer does not give. Sometimes the yeah. employer has given the leave. The employee does not take, take it. So once you have acquiesced in, 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 in the leave not being taken, I would think that an agreement has taken place. It's implied and you have allowed the employee not to go on leave. And in that case, the law says, well, that leave that you are taking accumulated over the years will be void and it can't, you can't enjoy it. Um, when um, someone mentioned the 300 days, the, 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 there is a side to it that um, sometimes employers don't think about. They feel, well, this my employee is very loyal. He doesn't even take leave. And you know, sometimes yeah. we actually <laughs> praise the people who don't go on leave because yeah. we say they are so dedicated. But in my experience, when a company is going, is, is undertaking a redundancy, that's when the employers really feel that the, the brunt of that decision. So an employee is, who's worked with you for 10 years probably did not take leave for six years, and they are leaving. And the law says when the employee is leaving, you're supposed to pay them whatever leave is due them. Imagine an employee with 30 <laughs> days of leave who has not taken leave for six years. When you have to pay that, in addition to whatever redundancy pay you have to negotiate, that is when you will know or understand <laughs> that um, uh, you, th th there's a reason why that provision prevents the, you from um, allowing the employee to stay on. You so actually be paying twice more because than, you yes. would think you saved um, money yeah. by not letting him go on paid leave. But then he took his salary during the periods that he stayed at post. Yeah. Now you have to pay all of that money again. Yeah. So it's like a double yeah. you know, yeah. benefits situation. Now that you've talked, you introduced the um, angle of where the employee applies for leave, but the employer probably doesn't grant it. I think it's a great point to introduce how leave should be applied for. Yes. So the law says employee should apply for leave at least 30 days before they take it. So yeah. if you're an employee and you want to go on leave or you have some plans, you should give the employer at least 30 days notice. And the reason is quite clear. This is a business is running and they need to know when, how to plan in your absence, what to do in your absence, how to uh, reorganize um, staff to be able to let the company function. And so it's only fair that an employee gives as much leave as possible. For many companies these days, what they do is at the beginning of the year, they allow, they let the employees put down the days they, they, they estimate to, or yeah. they intend yeah. to go on leave so that the employer or whatever, who, uh, whoever is in charge of leave, like HR, mm -hmm. can actually structure it properly where they say, well, this is our downtime yeah. So do you want to take more of those, uh, your days on this time, during this period, and then they give fewer days within the period where the employee is not, um, will not be needed, uh, and so on. So it does help to plan ahead. The 30 days is the minimum that the yeah. law says, but 
if you can plan from the beginning of the year, it's actually more beneficial yeah. to the employer. I think it's uh, more about planning on both sides and also so that um, you don't apply now and then they give you your leave or give you permission 10 months down the line. And at that point, perhaps you don't, you feel like you don't need the time. Probably there was a reason you needed to go on your annual leave at some point in time. I think it's important to also state that for the benefit of the employees, that they are required to give the date of employment. That is when the employee started to work with you. When they go on annual leave, you need to record it as well. And you need to indicate how much uh, um, the payments that you made to this employee whilst on leave during their leave period. So um, we'll go for a quick commercial break. When we return, we would uh, continue with our conversation on annual leave. This is Law Express. My mother passed on to me an age-old moisturizing secret handed down from generation to generation. Shea butter has been and still remains the ultimate and trusted natural product for the skin. It is safe for all, including newborns. I use Violon Shea Butter products for my hair and skin and for all my children, right from birth. Violon Shea Butter is an amazing diaper cream. I love my family. That is why I trust only Violon Shea Butter products for our skin care needs. Violon Shea Butter, feed your skin right. When the employee is on leave, I mentioned before, the employer may interrupt the leave. When the employer interrupts the leave, it's not that the employee forfeits the leave, no. Mm -hmm. The employee should be allowed to take the leave some other time of the year. In the event that that is not possible, then the employee must take the leave by the end of the year for it to spill over into the next year. Mm -hmm. So that will not count as carrying over of leave or accumulating leave, no. It has started from the previous year and then ends in the new year mm -hmm. and that is the only circumstances where leave from a, the previous year can be taken into the next year yeah. otherwise as we mentioned before you cannot carry over leave into the next year yeah. um, the provisions on leave also permits the employee to or the employer to break the leave into two equal parts yeah. so that if the employee has 20 days they can take it in two ten two tens two tens and if you're an, an employer listening Here's the thing when it comes to interrupting leaves. The language that the Labor Act uses is that there must be urgent necessity. So you don't interrupt a person's leave because you feel like. You don't interrupt a person's <laughs> leave because him or her. <laughs> you miss him or her. You don't interrupt a person's leave as a form of punishment. Yeah. You don't interrupt a person's leave just because you can before you pick up the phone or before you give the instructions for that worker to be reached out to, the threshold you need to meet is whether it is urgent, there's an urgent necessity for that worker's presence. Yeah. Now, it may be difficult to define what urgent necessity is, but you would know an urgent necessity situation when you see one. So if there's an easily replaceable candidate or person who could do the work, that's not urgent necessity. If there are alternative ways of getting the services that the employee is providing, that is not an urgent necessity. So these are safeguards that the law has put in place to ensure that before you as an employer reach out to an employee on leave, you must be absolutely clear in your mind that if I don't get this particular employee back to work on this particular day, it would have serious consequences for the business. So if you cannot answer the question yeah. in the affirmative, you have no business reaching out the employee who is on leave. So, so to further bring the, or drive the point home, 
Um, assuming you work in a hospital setting, and this yeah. is a specialist who is the only one with some technical know-how that no other doctor in the facility does, and you have probably a critical emergency uh, or situation, and it's about saving somebody's life, and he's the only one or she's the only one who can perform whatever service it is or surgery that you yeah. may require. At this point, yes, anybody who sees this will know that, yes, this was a very yeah. necessary uh, interruption of perhaps a person's uh, leave. Um, we sampled people's opinion on the discussion today. Okay. Let's take a listen and see where their minds are. Workers have the right to trade their annually for extra money because that time is supposed to be free for them and then they decided to work again so I think they should their salary should be given to them in double fold. I might go for yes and no depending on the situation. I'll go for a yes because you can't actually tell the amount of money the person earns a month. So you see some people don't earn much and they have a lot of duties to do and they have families to take care of. So if they feel they will be home while they are having their leave and they think they can work to earn money, why not? Workers who want to trade their annual leave for extra money, I think that's, that's a good thing. If the person does not want to go on a leave and thinks that if he or she works extra, um, the company will provide that money for him or her, why not? They are working because of productivity and they are working for money as well, so that's fine. I don't see why um, a worker should be allowed to work and then receive an extra money for a leave that has been scheduled for the person. You know, the reason why there is a leave for you is because you need a rest. So once you need a rest, when the time comes for you to go and rest, you have to go and rest. You can decide to work, but you'll be exhausted. And when you are sick, you use that same money to cater for yourself. And it's going to take away that money you requested for. So I don't see why um, they should be allowed to work for an extra money. Once they decide not to work, let them go on leave, force them to go on leave. I think workers have the right to trade their annual leave for money because it's their time, it's their space and they decide to work extra so therefore they should be paid for that. The question is what is the essence of you having your leave? It's for you to just take a break from what you are doing so that at least you gather a lot of energy and then go back to it. That is the essence of annual leave. We have something we call work-life balance. Sometimes employers would want employees to also go on leave, take some days off so that they can also have that relief, okay? So that when they come back to work, they have the strength to be productive. Workers should not trade their leave for extra money because I think it's going to worry the organization's budget. And moreover, workers are supposed to have some rest. So I don't think it's advisable to use your um, the time you have to go for leave to work, yeah, I don't think it's advisable. I don't think workers should trade their annual leave for money because the body needs rest. The more you are energized, the more you can work. And if you are, if you are exhausted, you do shabby work. And the, the body needs rest and, the, and the, the, the mind needs to be sound so that you can be able to work and be productive. So I'm, not sure, I, I'm, I'm against it. So I don't think workers should trade their annual leave for extra money. Because you need, um, as a worker, you need to go on leave to be able to rest and then come back better off and then to help production. Yeah, that's what I think. I think workers should be given the right to trade their annual leave for money because too much money wouldn't hurt anyone and besides going on the leave the time they can they they will go on the leave with can be used to do something that will be productive and will benefit the company so they should be given that right and the money as well those are very interesting um, um, views of the public. Well, I think the, the flaw in most of them were that people believe that the leave is their right and they can do what they want to do. But I think it is a legal... <laughs> it's, it's an entitlement. It is an entitlement, but it's yes. provided by law and you have to take it. And so, yes, it is your free time, but you can't sell it. When you sell it, you are doing something illegal. 
You mm -hmm. can't do that. And the whole purpose of the law is the country or the government or the laws are meant to protect our well-being. So the law does recognize that as a human being, you need some rest. And because you need the rest, that is why you ought to take the leave. You shouldn't sell it. But another side that nobody is looking at or the employees who were of the view, uh, of the view that the employer should allow them to work and then they should be paid for their leave was that an employer who does not comply with the Labor Act is breaching the laws. And they could be liable for it because the Labor Department is empowered to check and undertake inspections. Mm -hmm. Of In your records. Exactly. So if the Labor Inspector comes and finds that well, this company, they don't take leave. Or even one of your employees goes to tip them off that well. As for here, they <laughs> allow us to take our, uh, t uh, get paid for we our sell leave. It. Yeah. It's an issue the Labor yeah. de uh, Officer could report you to the labor commission or they could they themselves could actually call you to order in, in this case maybe no monetary issue will arise but you think of your reputation to as an employer yeah do you want to be the employer who is known to the public to not be complying with laws and be stealing people's leave exactly so that that's the angle that the employees did not uh, envisage or anticipate when they were talking about just their right to do what they want with their leave Wages are typically very low for a widespread of employees. Mm -hmm. So in listening to the videos and, you know, somebody <laughs> feeling like, well, I mean, <laughs> if I can cash in and make Business some extra income, I mean, why not? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's really just a question of perspective and all. I mean, they, they have basic needs they need to meet. They are looking at the income. The income doesn't match up. So... To a certain level, the discussions around Charlie, the money is not enough. Mm. I How should take I leave more? and go and sit home. You know, it, it doesn't really add up for lots of people. And that's really where the temptation lies for the, um, for the employer, for the employee to say, you know what? I don't mind cashing in if getting extra income would be the end result. Yeah. But then and again, the legislative provisions and the intent is also very clear. You take your leave, you use your leave as a basis for rest and securing your well-being. So um, speaking it from where you left off, um, when you look at the law, the suggestion or it's, so, it's such that the worker, or the, sorry, the employer has that responsibility to make sure they take every practicable step to ensure that the um, employee gets his or her annual leave. Yeah. So that duty sits with the employer yeah. to make sure they get it. But there's also the other end of it. You can't force the employee to go and leave. I think you can force them. How would you do on. this? When you are supposed to go on leave, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be at the office. So if the employee enters the building with a swipe card, you de deactivate it during that period. Because as I said... That is if you have that system in place. Yes. You, I mean, you're so posh that um, you assume <laughs> that every office has cards and an automated system. Yeah. Listen, here's the case. You already are understaffed. And so, yes, you've told the employee that you can go. You have, this is your leave. But he's bored, perhaps, and every day he shows up to sit around and help around. See, the law anticipates things like this, and that is why the only thing the employee loses is the forfeiture of your leave that you did not sure. take. So, I mean, your question actually raises a very strong case for an effective HR system. Yeah. Because to be to, to, to be honest, to be honest, the kind of structure that we operate or we see businesses operate on a day to day, the employer is happy to see the employee <laughs> work every single day of the year and tend, you know and, and just pretend there is nothing like yeah. leave exactly. you know in place. So the employee also for whatever purpose, so you are starting out new or you are trying to get to the next level or to the next rank, so you are trying to gain some loyalty within the organization, so one of the cards would be, you know, I forfeit my leave and everything, so... <laughs> I'm committed. I'm committed. Um, I'm a shining example yeah. of, you know, how the business, the company's principles and working values are being upheld and all. So, 
It's a very complex thing. And this is where effective HR comes in. Because when you are playing a long-term game, then the question is, would you rather have your employee burn candles at both ends? Yeah. And at the end of the day, they are burnt out. The possibility of them making very costly mistakes that hurts the business and exposes the company to liabilities are also very high. Yeah. So it's, it's, really, it's, it, it's really at this point that you probably need an effective HR to make a business case why leave is an imperative, why employee well-being is important, mm -hmm. why, why employees should be able to, you know, take up leave and, and take up leave and not feel guilty about it because in practical terms, and I'm sure you would know, <laughs> in practical terms, there are some people who take leave and they take the leave with guilt. Yeah. Hey, so, and, 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 and the flip side is that some people the express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. Yeah. I mean, our place, we never take leave. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, you know, there, there are conversations like that. So it's, there's, it's, it's, there, there's a cultural angle to it, organizational yeah. culture. There is there's a social norm yeah. to it and all. But really, that is where HR comes in. Because if you are playing the long-term game, then you cannot afford to lose certain key employees simply because they are working in an inefficient it's manner. It's true. Our society prefers people who are more hardworking. And people tend to show that as a virtue. Yeah. And so they pretend that they are machines and don't need to rest. And it's also from the upbringing. I mean, I always hear this a lot where people go like, oh, ask for my mom. If she sees me resting for a minute, she's worried. You need to be pretending to be working at least. So it's quite similar in most work environments where some employers, even if you are just sitting behind your desk doing nothing, they prefer that you are physically present than to be away or off-site. We'll go for a quick commercial break. When we uh, come back, we continue from where we left off, and then we also consider some questions from social media and attempt to answer them. Don't go away. This is Law Express. My mother passed on to me an age-old moisturizing secret handed down from generation to generation. Shea butter has been and still remains the ultimate and trusted natural product for the skin. It is safe for all, including newborns. I use Violon Shea Butter products for my hair and skin and for all my children, right from birth. Violon Shea Butter is an amazing diaper cream. I love my family. That is why I trust only Violon Shea Butter products for our skincare needs. Violon Shea Butter, feed your skin right. I had an accident and broke my leg. I stayed home from work for almost two months until I fully recovered. When I resumed work, I requested for my annual leave after seven months. My HR says they cannot grant me the leave because I stayed home for two months when I broke my leg. Do they have the right to deny me my annual leave because I took a sick leave earlier this year? Sule from Bogosom. They don't, the employer cannot uh, withhold your leave because you were away due to sickness. <laughs> the, the provisions are so clear on leave that any period that you are off due to sickness will not count as part of your annual leave. Mm -hmm. So it is clear that annual leave cannot be part of anything and definitely sickness is not one of them. Um, even voluntary work and civic duties, which we mentioned earlier, should not be counted as part of your leave. So certainly a sickness that has been certified by a medical doctor is required to be taking um, a sick leave, not annual leave. Mm -hmm. And so the employer could not and should not have, have withheld your leave on the basis of that. And just to support your point, 
we, we, we typically find these problems with employers who are playing the short-term gain yeah. and not looking at the long term. So from the facts that, you know, that we have from the listener, it is true. The employee has already been away from work for what, seven months. Yeah. So two I mean, months. for two months. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, you are looking at your calculator, calculating the benefits that the employee, you know, is, is being given. You are looking at the period that the employee will assert as his right to leave. And then you are thinking, isn't this too much? But clearly, that's a, pro that's, 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 that's a product of a short-term thinking. Because ultimately, guess what? The other employees are also looking and asking themselves, is this company really worth working for? Yeah. If I'm out for two months and it's a big deal and I have to literally beg and fight for my leave, what kind of message is being sent around? So, I mean, employ employers would need to approach some of these questions a bit more differently and look at the long term because if your employees trust you and they have confidence in you and they know that they've got their back so that in the process if they get injured and all it will definitely take a toll in terms of earnings or for the business and all but ultimately things will level up in the long term because running a business is a long-term game as well so Two things. Now, you probably need to start within the organization. Is there a grievance procedure within the organization? If there's a grievance procedure within the organization, then you probably need to escalate it, trigger that procedure, and escalate it. If it's clearly not working, then you've got two options. The first option is to raise a complaint with the National Labor Commission or you can choose to go to court to assert your right. The labor department. Yes. Then you can also, yes, consider the labor department as well. I am entitled to a 21 days leave at my office. When I took my annual leave, the company called me back to work five days during my leave. When my official leave ended, I told my HR to give me back the five days they took from my leave. But he says no, he will not grant me the five days. What can I do in this situation because I feel cheated? I could see from Tama. So that employee whose leave was um, interrupted for five days is entitled to have the period that was taken out of their uh, regular leave yeah. given back to them. They have to take it any time within, within the year and the employee, employer cannot withhold it. As um, someone said, if the employer refuses, then undertake a grievance procedure or go to the labor department. But there is this issue. I mean, I am still in employment, so it makes it very difficult for employees to use this um, processes which require an external party. Jobs are scarce, exactly. after all. Yes. And mm -hmm. so when you go, you come back and <laughs> although the Lord has not permitted, you may lose your job. Yeah. And that is exactly why a lot of employers are exploiting the situation because you know that, okay, fine, go, go and report. Mm -hmm. When you come back, <laughs> this job will not be waiting for you. But, but um, this is exactly where the enforcement of uh, some of these things should take place. Yeah. The labor inspectors are sometimes supposed to do random visits. So sometimes a tip off is all that is necessary. If you're an employee listening, you don't need to go and say, <laughs> or give details whole fight. of your, yes. Um, you may want to just give Be a, a tip snitcher. off. Whistleblower. Well, Let's if, call if, it a whistleblower. If it's overdone, I mean, if, 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 especially with an employer who consistently breaches the rules, sometimes it is necessary. Yeah. yeah. But um, yes, the, the, there is the potential of you, the employee, being victimized and so on. And so I think that, yes, these are the options available to them. To add to that, I'm, I'm, sh I'm aware that he did not even talk about the expenses he might have made in having to return to work. That is, if he was probably somewhere else and has spent money to travel or make arrangements, yeah. he might have lost some um, things he had prepaid 
for. So that is also something he could explore where he has to let the employer know and prove it. Yes. So it brings us to the place where some employees think that because of this opportunity where, where your leave is interrupted, the employer may have to um, um, give you back or pay back some money you may have lost um, because of that interruption. Then they think that just saying it or exaggerating how much you actually spent will get you some extra money. No, you would have to reasonably you know, um, support whatever you're saying yeah. with some evidence. Yeah. So tickets, um, receipts, whatever, just to show that, look, it's yeah. true, it really did happen. I think we have to introduce the issue of termination of employment or suspension from work, yeah. not affecting your annual leave. Okay, so in the case where, let me start with termination and to Basically, when lawyers say termination and all, what they are saying is that you've not done anything wrong. There's an employment contract. The employment contract says that you can terminate or you can bring the contract to an end by giving a month notice, two months notice, three months notice. Here's the thing. Leave that you've earned before the termination typically would have to be prorated. So there are ways of calculating it mm -hmm. so that up until your period of termination, the leave that you've earned would typically be converted into cash for you as part of the packages that you are working away with. Yeah. Now, the scenario is slightly different in the case where you've been dismissed. What you need to know is that if it is your conduct, okay, and typically a negative conduct that leads to your termination, then at the end of the day, you forfeit all your benefits, including your leave entitlement as well. Yeah. So if you are dismissed, then no leave benefits, no leave entitlement. If you are terminated, yes, then the company would have to, depending on where you are terminated, the company would have to prorate and convert into cash the period that's outstanding or the period that you have earned when it comes to your leave? When it comes to, so in terms of negative conduct, sometimes an employee may be suspended so that the employer will undertake um, investigations. What oh, the yeah. law says is called it interdiction. So during investigations into your misconduct or any uh, investigation that the employer is undertaking, they, they will send you away and then they check to see whether whatever allegations they had is true. If it is found or those allegations are unsubstantiated and they call you back to work and you resume work, you are entitled to any leave that you would have had during the period. The employer cannot say, okay, during your suspension, you rested for two months, so <laughs> you won't take leave for the rest of the year. No, you are entitled to your leave after a suspension period, once you come back to work. But where you are dismissed, as he said, following such an investigation, then, of course, you forfeit the leave because it is a misconduct that is sending you home. Today's employee is not, you know, the employee of, I don't know, maybe okay. 20 years or 30 years ago. The dynamics within the employment la landscape has changed considerably. Now, employers and employees now want different things. Yeah. So in the case of an employee, the employee wants respect, the employee wants to feel valued, the employee wants to feel important. And in some instances, the employee actually commands his own you know, activities. He doesn't wait for the employer to say, oh, do this, do that, do this, do that. So the landscape is different. So the employee, employer must approach the employee with respect and not abuse some of the powers and rights that it has as an employer. Because to be honest, if you, if, if, if at the end of the day, you use the, the, the leave granting powers in an abusive manner, then the question is what kind of signal are you also sending to that particular yeah. employee? Is, does that particular employee feel valued, feel important, feel respect? Then there's the secondary question. What kind of signal are you also sending to the wider workforce? Corporate reputation as Your well. Your corporate reputation, which eventually, yes. So eventually, 
you know, these things happen internally, but then they spill over, then on the market, Good your well. reputation then becomes, you know, the reputation <laughs> of, you know, these people are A, B, C, D, and all. Mm. So it is important that employee, em, employers should reorient themselves and understand that the workers are not slaves and they are not masters in the colonial sense of it. Um, I think we've come to the end of the show, but I would like to take your final comments, Jifa. Oh, when he mentioned your corporate reputation, it's yeah. just something employers should note that there is Glassdoor. It's this website where employees anonymously post information about the employer. And when you go there, you learn a lot about employers, what salary they pay, whether the employer is a progressive employer, whether the employer is inclusive. It's, I mean, everything you can find out by an employer that an employee is ready to put there. Of course, it, 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 a, a, um, an aggrieved employee can post anything, but it's, if it is consistent, then yeah. clearly it is show, it's yeah. clear that that is the... Um, Your reputation. The, exactly. And if you're an employer who's looking for a competitive, you want to be competitive in the market and to get the talent and skills. And even for goodwill. Exactly. Yeah. Then you don't want any negativity out there about you oh, it's been a great show once again thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much for coming um, it's important to remind our viewers that whereas employees are entitled to annual leave employers have that responsibility to make sure that they put mechanisms in place to ensure that these people actually get their annual leaves within the calendar year Thank you so much once again, uh, Samuel Alessu Doji, for coming to Law Express. And Jifa uh, Van thank you very much. They are both private legal practitioners. My name is Noella Seydou, and this has been our show.